University Press, which published its first book in 1478, was set up by the Oxford University, the oldest university in the English-speaking world. By the late 1800s, OUP began to expand internationally to the USA, Canada, Australia, India and South Africa. Subsequently, the Pakistan branch office was set up in 1952. Today, the OUP is the largest university press in the world, with branches in 50 countries. Karachi, a small town, had hardly any publishing infrastructure prior to independence, but had great potential with the only seaport and international airport of the country. By August 1951, W.F. Jeffery arrived in Karachi from Bombay to set up the first OUP Pakistan branch. Jeffrey stayed at the Metropole Hotel and took an extra room to use as the office. After Karachi, offices were opened in Lahore and Dhaka in the then East Pakistan. Jeffrey was not successful in the early years and losses accumulated and a date for closing down OUP Pakistan was set. Philip Chester was called in 1956 to see if he could salvage the branch. Finally, his determination bore fruit. It was in a caravanserai building uh, on McLeod Road, called Budry Building, uh, and uh, the main uh, traffic was in fact camels coming in with uh, carts with oil drums on. Uh, we had offices above that. The Badri building began to assume a sort of a very emotional tie to us because it was such a strange and funny sort of building where uh, something like the Oxford University Press should work. To enter it you had to go through the huge bazaar and then you were faced by this goat under the wooden stairs. It was 1960 or 59 or 60. Our social circle we also included John Rendell and Neil Burton. We used to often meet at parties and places and so Neil one day mentioned to me, he said, you know, why don't you join the Oxford City Press? I was the first uh, local female employee as publicity manager the, in the press. In my short acquaintance with AP Pakistan, John Rendell was a crucial figure in that he followed the disastrous Jeffrey um, and put the branch on a firm footing. We, we f working in uh, underneath fans and using lots of stones to keep the papers from flying off. The editorial staff was really two people, John Rendell and myself. When editors came to help me, as John Story will remember, uh, we both sat in the same office. And he found it rather disturbing, sort of staring at his general manager across the desk. So we built an array of catalogues in front of us so that we couldn't see each other while we were editing. The decision to um, adapt the Crescent Readers, which the AUP had published for some years, simply to get the contract in December, the books had to be written and printed and on the desks in three or four months is almost impossible. But we just about did it. I remember with uh, some uh, pain and some pleasure, pain, a short history of Islam, which was uh, not short, it was over a thousand pages. The other one, the, the odes of uh, Kushal Khan Khatan, one page in the, uh, the original Pashto and the other page in English with uh, notes and so on, uh, was a unique book. The, the ones that kept us in business were prescribed by the Board of Intermediate and Secondary Education, such as poems for young people, more poems for young people, the Winslow Boys, play by Terence Vatican. Intermediate English book two, Ahmad and Vahana, book one, two, three. Oh, we did original poetry, like first voices, pieces of eight. During the 60s, the branch expanded and came into its own as a Pakistan-based publisher by developing an English reader, the Ahmad and Rehana series, which sold steadily for three decades. So I found myself writing poems about Pakistan. Um, which I did. Most of the Pakistan poems were published, in fact, in a book by AUP called Out of Bounds. John Rendell's successor was Neil Burton, who was based in Karachi from 1964 to 1967. 
followed by Edward Fitzgerald from 1967 to 1968. In Neil Burton's time, uh, the press had published a kind of prestige biography by Ayu Khan, who had been president for 10 years. We had a lot of stock of his book, mainly in Lahore. Then one day, I was on the telephone at the end of the day, talking to Wajid, and suddenly Wajid said, my God, he said, what was that? Uh, and the line went dead. Uh, and actually, of course, what it was, was somebody had thrown a stone at Wajid's office wall, glass. It had gone through but not hurt him. And people had come in and set fire to the entire stock of Friends Not Masters. There were the two regional managers, Wajid Ali in Lahore, who ran his own thing. Um, he was known as the Mr. Fixit of the Punjab, as I've told you, because he had tremendous connections uh, and, and was particularly good on anti-piracy legislation. He was always in the courts. Riazul Islam in, uh, in Dhaka. When I joined the manager, we were in the tower. We were in the National and Greenlay Bank building. We were in the first floor. We were in the crane. We were in the first floor. 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 From 1969 to 73, David Cunningham saw the breakup of Pakistan the formation of Bangladesh and the loss of almost half the market of the branch. In spite of all the trials, he managed to keep it afloat. The, well, the most prestigious thing we were doing was continuing the Oxford in Asia historical reprint series, which had been um, started by my predecessor, David Cunningham. These were very informative and historically important books which were written by the British officers and travellers in the 19th century. Dr. James Burns had come here to treat the Talpur royal family and he wrote a book about uh, Sindh at that time. I wrote an introduction for that. And then I wrote one for the memoirs of Naumal Hochchand, who was at that time a prominent citizen of Karachi. The very first one was one David had already, I think, identified he wanted to do called 18 Years in the Khyber by a man called Warburton, which has been in, set in the 1880s. Um, but then we went on with Elphinstone's account of the Kingdom of Cobol. We were trying to renew the um, uh, school book publishing for the private school sector in, in Pakistan. And After that, we came to 75, we came to shift to Harun Hosme. Harun Hosme is the Don Akbar. उसी के बेसमेंट में हमारा वेरांस था और सेकंड फ्लोर पे हमारा ऑफिस था। We just went one room and the uh, of course uh, Mr. Lewis was there so he had a room to himself and the remaining staff had were in one big room. It was more a family affair that time because it was a small staff. Tim Bembo followed Anthony Mogak as the head of OUP from 1975 to 77. We had a special series of exhibitions, we called it 501 Years of Oxford University Press. The main editorial input had to be in the educational books, the English series that we published, you know, like Active English and Ahmed and Rahana and several other books which we dealt with through our agents, for whom we were agents like Gin, the Gin Company in the UK. This was uh, Lahore, which was a hotbed of piracy, and uh, we, we did organize some police raids, which were, well, successful in the sense that a whole lot of stock was seized, and printers and pirates were a bit more wary after that. It didn't solve the problem, frankly, and I dare say it still continues to some extent. The booksellers, yes, in those days were very reluctant to pay on the due date, that was always a problem, but now I think that's been overcome. But... Zia Hussain, previously the marketing manager, became the first Pakistani head of OUP Pakistan, serving from 1981 to 88. 82, we were in the The school sales office was in a small room. There used to be this race that who will go and get the table in the chair, and the rest who, who were unable to occupy a chair 
we used to have those cartons of books lying there, our sample books there, and then the rest were supposed to or they have to, they had no other choice, they had to sit on those cartons. I joined OUP at the entry level. My first position was of an educational representative and my job description was to visit uh, schools, colleges, universities, libraries, medical colleges. The challenges were that um, initially perhaps it was because I've, I was a woman or perhaps because I had been there at a very junior level. People found it difficult to accept me as the head. I mean I went to visit, I think it was a school in Lahore, it was a boys school. I entered the office. He was either the administrator or the principal of the school. I knocked on the door, opened the door and walked and he saw me. I felt as if uh, he's shocked to see me and he, was, he looked frightened. And he got up and he said, it'll get done. Don't worry, your work will be done, but send a man. Then in 1988, I rejoined Oxford University Press and this time as the chief executive. That was really, it really became my focus when I came back to OUP as the general manager, at that time it was called, the position was the general manager. Later it was uh, changed to managing director. The first author that I commissioned was Shanul Haq Khatti because I felt that we didn't have uh, an English to Urdu dictionary, a standard worker reference. And he was the best person around. Charles Lewis, who was the former head of OUP, introduced me to Nicholas Hosbrough. A British author, I commissioned him to produce a science course. The third was a book called The Separation of East Pakistan, written by Hassan Zahir. The major thrust of ours in the 80s was on uh, publishing books for schools. Because again, I was very conscious of the fact that uh, children were using books published in Singapore and Hong Kong. My first uh, series was a social studies one and the author was Peter Moss. He was working with a very experienced editor, uh, Banu. And when she left, I took uh, took over from there. Outsource काम करवाते थे Oxford वाले. तो जहाँ से वो करवाते थे वो एक जगह थी industrial printing press. तो मैं वहाँ job करता था. तो Avan साहब मुझसे ही इत्तेफाक से वहाँ वो काम करवाते थे. तो मुझे already पता था कि Oxford का style क्या है, standard क्या है. तो Avan साहब ने अदराय मजाक मुझसे interview जब किया तो ये कहा कि क्या line खेच लेते हो computer पे. शुरू में हम कार्टन पैक करके भी जमाने करते थे इसको तो एक हफ्ते अक्सर ज्यादा में कार्टन पैक करने के भी जमाने में एक कंटेनर और अब जो है हम पांच कंटेनर एक दिन में भिजवा देते हैं घर पर किताबें भी होती थी वहाँ पर एक भेजे थे फिर इसका जवाब आता था बहुत कम हमारे पास कंप्यूटर से लोगों के पास तकरीबन चौरासी में लेजर आया है चौरासी के बाद फिर कहीं जाके काम जो है वो आहिस्ता आहिस्ता कंप्यूटर पर होना शुरू हुआ है मुझे ऐसा महसूस होता है जैसे मुझे अपने घर में किसी फैमिली मेम्बर के साथ काम कर रहा हूँ मुझे सारे घर के फैमिली मेंबर्स लगते हैं किसी जगह पे जाते हैं तो दो से चार आदमी बैठे होते हैं तो वहाँ भी है लेकिन अगर जब हमारा पता चलता है कि ऑक्सफोर्ड से आ जाए तो हमें बहुत इज्जत और एहतराम के साथ मकसद करते तो कर भी लेकिन ऑक्सफोर्ड का नाम आके फिर उसमें तो हम भी, भी थोड़े से फख्र महसूस करते हैं फ्राम बैंगलोर टाउन बारिश के दिनों में बहुत अच्छा होता था थोड़ा सा टाइम मिल जाता था लंच में तो लोग नीचे क्रिकेट खेलते थे शारा फैसल भी ऑफिस होता था बुलबुले बन जाते थे पकौड़े बन जाते थे छोटा सा स्टाफ था ऊपर मंजूर चाय डिस्ट्रीब्यूट करते थे सबको ऑक्सफोर्ड में सालाना डिनर हुआ करता था और ये जुलन पार्टी होती थी क्रिसमस डिनर होते थे मैंगो पार्टी होती थी एक दिन हम लोग दीप्ति में दौरान के बारिश हुई बहुत ज़्यादा बारिश हुई थी कई मबाद की तरफ से मुझे तो ये रोड बहुत जाम था हम लोग निकल गया शारा फैसल की तरफ वहाँ बहुत पानी थी उसके पास जब घर हम लोग पहुँचते पहुँचते रात को दो तीन बज गया नाइनटीन नाइन्टी थ्री की बात है जब एक पैशन भी हुई यहाँ पे कराची में कि हैवी रेन की और हमारे पास शार फैसल में जगह काफ़ी कम थी बारिश शुरू हो गई थी तो पूरा माल हमने यहाँ से वहाँ शिफ्ट किया और ट्रक के ज़रिए तकरीबन हमने 10 बजे काम शुरू किया और रात 12 बजे तक वो कंप्लीट किया जिसमें एम डी भी हमारे साथ कभी इधर आती हैं कभी वो नर्सरी पे होती हैं गाड़ी में थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च को हमारी क्लोजिंग होती थी तो उसमें हम तकरीबन तीन चार चार बजे जाते थे ऑफिस से क्योंकि वो सिस्टम मैनुअली सिस्टम कह सकते इस तरह था इन द नाइन्टीज़ आई वुड से वट आई एम रियली प्राउड ऑफ दर्टी सेवन बुक्स एट वी पब्लिश इन नाइनटीन to celebrate 50 years of Pakistan's independence I was asked by UP to do a book on Karachi Mega City was applied to Karachi by our book and it became a popular kind of reference for Karachi after that 
और वहाँ हम लोग तकरीबन 20 साल हम लोग रहे और 2002 में हम यहाँ शिफ्ट हुए अपनी ओन बिल्डिंग में अमीना ने बड़ी कोशिश करी फिर यहाँ पे उसकी उबर मिली और फिर ये बिल्डिंग बनानी शुरू करी अमीना जैसा मेरे से उन्होंने पूछा गया इस प्लाट के बारे में या जो भी तो मैंने कहा मुझे जो प्लाट इसलिए पसंद है कि ये इससे आगे हम जाएंगे तो आलाब जैसे कि हम गाँव में इससे आगे फिर आलाब कुछ ठीक नहीं होता पता चला कि मैं जगह खरीद ली है वी बॉट इट एंड वी कन्वर्टेड दैट वेयर हाउस एंड देन वी बिगैन वर्क ऑन द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द बिल्डिंग वी गॉट कामिल खान मुमताज टू डिजाइन इट वी गॉट बैक्सी सिद्वा टू ले द फाउंडेशन स्टोन ऑफ दिस बिल्डिंग आई सो द द प्रोजेक्ट्स कम थ्रू इन द प्लान्स कम थ्रू एम बट आई वेंट आई वेंट आउट टू सी इट द फर्स्ट टाइम इट वाज इट वाज कंप्लीट एम एंड इट्स अ मार्वेलस मार्वेलस बिल्डिंग इट्स नथिंग लाइक दैट इन द रेस्ट ऑफ द यूपी वर्ल्ड I think this is the first book that uh, Urdu book that got endorsed by the University of Cambridge as an O level text. It's called O level Urdu syllabus B. I wrote a book on the history of Sindh for children and then discussed this with Amina and we decided to have history for all the provinces of Pakistan. It's got one of the highest growth rates in the whole of the press uh, consistently. so that's that's one of the the re- ways i look at it also the awards it gets for its publishing and the recognition that it has for what it produces as well as a very good relationships with its authors uh, with the a- academic community if you look at its its growth rates are are fantastic compared with any other part of the, of the world um it's still a relatively small part of india but it's significant and as i said its growth rates are are, are really good and that reflects the way the pakistan Pakistani um population and middle class is growing as well. We reach out into the into the communities in Pakistan a lot more than we do in, in other places. Um for example, I mean a good example is the um contribution we made to the flood relief in in Sindh province in 2010 where we produced um 300,000 books free to give out to UNICEF temporary schools. Um these are the books that we produced and um we gave 100,000 of these each out to to the schools, UNICEF schools. We physically go out into the into the country through our mobile van. Um which is unique in OUP's world. So there was always a problem of piracy. Uh and Amina was very very sort of brave in the way she fought piracy and looked after OUP's interests. Um there's all that sort of problem but i mean we have done very well over the years and we seem to be getting bigger and better all the time i remember um, one year we had book fairs in 28 towns of pakistan simultaneously across the country including places like gilgit and skardu we had three karachi literature festivals and each festival has been uh, much larger than the previous one so the idea of a literature festival was to get authors to interact with their readers and f- to get readers to meet the authors in the flesh i talk to amina when she comes and i'm amazed you know when i hear of all of the initiatives that are being taken not just in school books but in you know in our scholarly list in our scholarly publishing and our our reference publishing um and uh the op pakistan is is by anybody's standards make a fantastic contribution to um the, the local pakistani culture and 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 the, the scholarly community as as well as in the schools it's uh, it's been a terrific story i was very impressed with how the name of oup pakistan on this festival attracted wonderful authors and the audience that attended was enormous oup pakistan has continued its tremendous growth and tremendous success it struggled with difficulties of natural disaster and sometimes political unrest but it has always fulfilled the mission of Oxford University Press the branch has come a long way from its beginning in 1952 the most important resource of the branch 
its staff and their training, development and well-being, as well as the determination of the head office will enable it to successfully chart the future course and keep moving forward with confidence.